Okay, we're continuing in section 4.1 um, with more about vector spaces. And uh, there's uh, w one way that we've talked about uh, for finding th if a set is a subspace of another vector space is to show that it satisfies the three properties uh, that, that it contains the zero vector of the parent vector space it's closed under addition and it's closed under scalar multiplication <coughs> these uh, so to show that um, a set is a subspace then you can show that these three things hold or to show that it's not a subspace show that at least one of these does not hold but we have another uh, method uh, for showing that a set is a subspace and this doesn't work in all cases but in some cases you can use this theorem and it makes life much easier because you don't have to go through and show those three properties hold so the theorem says if v1 through vp are vectors in some vector space v then the span of v1 through vp is a subspace of v okay so what this says is that if we can write our set as the span of a finite set of vectors okay write it in this form span of v1 through vp for some vectors then automatically we can conclude that the set is a subspace <clears throat> so let's look at this example we have a set s which consists of all vectors of this form okay it's a subset of r3 um, first component is two times some real number t second component is zero and the third component is the negative of that uh, real number t that we had up in the first component okay so how uh, we want to know if s is a subspace of r3 if we use the original method uh, that is to show that the three properties hold then we would start with um, saying does s contain the zero vector and uh, in this case if we set t equal to zero then uh, we get zero 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 and so um, the zero vector is contained in the set s so we go to um, the next property is s closed under addition we need two generic vectors from S, um, so let's call those U and V, and U uh, looks like 2U0 negative U, and we'll say V is 2V0 negative V, and we need to add those together and see if the resulting vector is in the form uh, that it has to be to be an S. So we add U and V, and uh, rearrange terms just a little bit, and we end up with this uh, vector here. We've got 2 times u plus v in the first component, 0 in the second component, negative u plus v in the third component. And this is in the form that it needs to be uh, to be in the set S because u plus v here is a real number. Uh, we know that because uh, these came from the vectors u and v. Um, so we have 2 times u plus v in the first component, negative u plus v in the last component, 0 in the middle. So it is in S. So S is closed under uh, addition. So we move on to the third property. Um, is S closed under scalar multiplication? Well, again, we need a generic vector from the set S and a scalar, which we'll call C. And we compute C times u and uh, again rearranging terms a little bit we can write it as 2 times cu in the first component negative c times u in the last component 0 in the middle and since both c and u are real numbers then c times u is a real number so this vector is in s so we have all three properties satisfied and therefore s is a subspace of r3 now there's a fair amount of work that went into that um, and so let's look at how we could use or if we could use this theorem to make the, uh, the work a little easier. Alright, uh, if we 
take a generic vector from the set S and we write it in parametric vector form. So that means factor out the parameters. Um, in this case, there's only one, T. And so we can write any vector in S as T times zero, uh, 2, 0, negative 1. So any vector in S is a multiple of this vector. Therefore, uh, S is equal to the span of this vector. And since we've written S as the span of a finite set of vectors, that means uh, by the theorem, S is a subspace of R3. So you can see here that if you can, if your problem is one in which you can use this theorem, then uh, it makes the work much easier. Here's another example. Uh, that set we'll call W. Um, it's a subset of R4. And uh, we want to know, is uh, W a subspace of R4? So again, we could go through the three uh, properties, you know, zero vector, closed under addition, closed under scalar multiplication. But it's much easier. Um, to apply the theorem. So here we uh, write this generic vector in parametric vector form. There are three parameters here, A, B, and C. So we factor those out. And, uh, and so at this point, we have written uh, this generic vector as a linear combination of these three vectors. That is exactly what it means when we say that um, W is the span of those vectors because any vector in W can be written as a linear combination of these three. So again, we've got W is um, the span of a, a finite set of vectors and so by the theorem it must be a subspace of R4. Alright, here's another one. Um, set T um, given here and uh, we want to know, is it a subspace of R3? So we proceed as we did before, apply, uh, try, uh, try to write uh, this generic vector as a uh, sub, as a uh, linear combination. Apologize for the fun there. Linear combination of uh, vectors in uh, R3. Um, and so we can write it, but notice what happens. Um, if we factor out the A and the B, we're left down here with uh, a vector, but no parameter associated with it. And so we can't write this vector as a linear combination of vectors, because a linear combination means you've got a, a parameter or a multiplier in front of each vector. And here uh, the multiplier is set at 1. We can't uh, alter this. So this is not a linear combination. And so we cannot apply theorem, uh, the theorem here. All right. And so in this case, our only uh, alternative is to go back to the first method. And so uh, let's, I'm going to go through that here just uh, because it's always good to have practice um, in doing that. So we look and we say, is the zero vector in the set? And um, a lot of times when you have a constant term like this, uh, that's a red flag. Um, and you have to think about that very carefully because a lot of times in those cases it will not be a subspace because um, in a lot of cases it moves you away from the origin, which means that your set does not contain the origin. So that's what we're asking here. Is the zero vector in T? Well, uh, for, the z for the zero vector to be in there, that means that each of the elements, uh, we, we need to be able to make each of the elements equal to zero. So if you look at the, the first or the second component, uh, for this to be zero, that means A has to equal 6B. And in the third component, it would mean A has to equal negative 2 times B. Okay, so if we put that together, uh, then that means that 6b is equal to negative 2b, and down here at this point. And uh, solving that, that means that b has to be 0. All right, and if b has to be 0, a is 6b, so that means a is 0. And in that case, we look back up the first component, that says you get a 1 there. And so, therefore, the origin is not contained in this set. 
All right, because to get zeros in the second and third positions, that means uh, we're going to end up with a 1 in the first position. So t does not contain the zero vector. Now at this point, you could stop and say t is not a subspace uh, of R3. But just for practice, I'm going to continue on uh, and say, um, is t closed under addition? And the answer is, uh, no, uh, it's not. Um, now to show that, we need to um, add two vectors together. We need to take two vectors from t, add them together, and uh, see if we get um, another vector that is in the set. So um, I picked 1, 0, 0. It's in the set uh, because it's what we just talked about. If the two, second two components are 0, then the first one has to be 1. And so, um, uh, so 1, 0, 0 is in the set. So I'm just going to add it to itself. And the result um, is 2, 0, 0. And so let's think, um, is that in the set? And uh, the answer is no, because as we said before, if the second two components are both 0, then the uh, first one has to be 1. So this vector is not in t. And therefore, t is not closed under addition. Um, so just for practice again, let's check is it closed under scalar multiplication. And here we have uh, no, the answer is no because we've got, um, again, I just chose 1, 0, 0 because we know that vector is in t and multiply it, actually we can multiply it by anything other than 1. Uh, I multiply by 2, we get 2, 0, 0 and that is not in t. All right, so um, this particular set T fails all three of those properties. Um, now here's one that looks similar to T. Um, it's uh, got the plus one, so it's got that constant term in it. Um, but notice here that uh, the A in the first uh, component here uh, is not constrained by anything in the other two components. And so um, this one's a little bit different. Still, we cannot apply the theorem because of that, that 1 in the first component. Right? We cannot write S as a linear combination of um, uh, vectors um, because we, we can't uh, account for that 1 uh, by doing that. So um, my point really in, with this example is to show that uh, just because you can't apply the theorem does not mean that the set is not a subspace. And so, in fact, this one is a subspace of R3. So we're going to go through and just show that. So uh, we have to go back to the original method for that. And so we ask, is the zero vector in, uh, that should be in S. Sorry about that. Is the zero vector in the set S? And the answer is yes. Um, because uh, B and C could certainly be 0, and we can set A equal to negative 1, and in that case we end up with a 0 vector. Um, is it closed under addition? And uh, the answer is, well, we take two arbitrary elements of the set, say U and V, so here's what U looks like, here's what V looks like, and when we add those together, we get this vector, so just u2 plus v2 in the second component, u3 plus v3 in the third. In the first, we get u1 plus v1 plus 2. Now you ask, is this vector in the set? And the answer is, um, well, it's not clear from looking at this whether it is or not. However, if we write it in this form, Okay, then it's clear because now, um, you know, this, obviously the second two components are just real numbers. And the first one, I, by, by factoring out a, a plus one and then uh, uh, gathering what's left here in parentheses, now this thing here, u1 plus v1 plus 1, is a real number. And so now my first component looks like some real number plus 1. And um, so that's a real number. Um, U1 plus V1 plus 1 is real. U2 plus V2 is real. And U3 plus V3 are real. Therefore, um, U plus V has to be in T.
or in S. Sorry about that. So it's closed under addition. Um, we take a similar approach to show that it's closed under scalar multiplication. Again, take a generic vector and a scalar. Uh, multiply the two. And again, here I had to factor out that plus one so that I could make it look like uh, the form that it has to be to be in the set. And that leaves me, in this case, with uh, this quantity here. Um, but that's a real number, right? Because C is real, U1 is real, uh, obviously 1 is real, so this quantity is a real number. So I got real number plus 1, and then the second two components are clearly real numbers, and that's what it takes to be in the set. So we can conclude that the set is closed under scalar multiplication, and so it's a subspace of R3. Um, another example, um, this one, uh, first glance, looks like maybe uh, you could uh, use the theorem here, but it turns out that you can't with that A times B in the first component. Uh, there's no way to break that up in a linear combination. And so you, this one, the theorem uh, does not apply. And so we go back uh, again to the original method. Um, and uh, uh, look and see, does this contain the zero vector? And clearly it does because you can set A and B both equal to zero, and that gives you the zero vector. Is it closed under addition? Uh, well, here, uh, let's go back and look at that set. Maybe it's not clear, um, just looking at that, whether it would be closed under addition or not. You have to do some thinking uh, a little work to, to arrive at a conclusion on that. Um, so really there are two approaches you could take. Um, one of them is to play around with the numbers and try to find a counterexample to show that it's not closed. So a counterexample would be a specific example, okay, specific numbers that you plug in and uh, show that the set is not closed. The other approach is to try to make a formal argument to show that it is closed, okay? And whichever one of these you pick really depends on the problem um, and whether you have uh, some intuition one way or the other. Um, and it also uh, actually depends a little bit on your personality. Uh, would, you, uh, would you rather uh, play around with the numbers and try to come up with a counterexample or um, would you rather take a more straightforward approach, which is to try to show that it's closed? Because a lot of times in that case, if you're trying to show that it's closed, um, you will either succeed or you will get to a point where you see why it's not closed. And so, um, so taking that route's a little more of a, a deliberate approach, uh, Playing with the numbers to try to find a counterexample is a little more of a random approach, but either either is valid, and um, it kind of depends on, as again, on your intuition, uh, whether you have a, a gut feeling one way or the other, and which you which you'd rather do, you know, what what you think is uh, the better way to go. Um, with this one, I'm going to choose the latter approach because maybe I, I, I don't know, it's just uh, not clear to me which, you know, whether it's closed or not closed. I don't have, maybe I don't have a gut feeling on that. So I'm just going to take the safe, deliberate approach and try to show that it's closed and see where that takes me. So I pick two arbitrary elements from the set. Okay, these vectors I've written here, P and, uh, U and V. And uh, when I add them together, uh, I get this vector, and so what I want to know is uh, if I multiply the second and third terms together, does that equal the first term, All right? So I'm asking, does, does first term, PQ plus XY, equal P plus X times Q plus Y? And as I look at that, I say, well, no. You know, sometimes it might, but in general, no, that does not hold. So that tells me, hmm, this is probably not closed under addition, and so uh, I think I'm going to switch horses now, switch gears, and try to find uh, a counterexample. All right, um, and so at this point, you kind of uh, scratch this out, 
um, consider that to be your scratch work, and you start over. Okay, so start over here, and this time I'm going to try to find a counterexample. And so um, now my advice is uh, make life simple. Uh, you know, a lot of, you can do a lot with just ones and zeros. Um, so here I chose u to be one one one, right? Second two components are one. Multiply them together, you get one. So that means first component is one. And v, um, I uh, have one two in the second and third components. Multiply those together and get two. So the the first component in v has to be two. All right. So so both these vectors are in s, and I add them together. And uh, so I get this vector 3, 2, 3, just adding component-wise u and v. And then I check, is this vector in s? And the answer is no, because when I multiply the second two components together, 2 times 3, I get 6. Um, but my first component's not equal to 6. Um, it's equal to uh, 3. And so um, this vector, u plus v, is not in s. So s is not closed under addition. Uh, now, at this point, we know that S is not a subspace of R3, but uh, again, for practice, let's keep going and look and see, well, is it closed under scalar multiplication? And uh, again, you can, you've got the choice which approach you want to take. Find a counterexample or work on a formal argument to show that it is closed. Um, in this case, I'm going to think, hmm, you know, it wasn't closed under addition, so I'm going to just... Uh, bet that it's probably not closed under scalar multiplication, so I'm going to fudge around and see if I can find a counterexample. So I need to come up with a vector that's of the general form and a scalar c such that when I multiply c times the vector, it, I get one that's not in, in the set. Um, this is a, a trial and error process. Um, and again, I would say start simple. Ones and zeros are good. Now, from before, we know that 1, 1, 1 is in the set because second two components, 1 times 1 is equal to 1. And so, um, you know, I might multiply by 0, but then I'm going to get 0, 0, 0, and that is in the set. Multiplying by 1 doesn't do me any good because that doesn't change the vector. I want something that's outside the set. So how about 2? If I multiply 2 times u, I get 2, 2, 2. And then I ask, is that in the set? And so you multiply the second and third components together. 2 times 2 gives you 4, but the first component is not 4. So therefore, this vector is not in the set, and we've shown that S is not closed under scalar multiplication. Okay, and uh, so, so now you have some examples, uh, examples that you can apply this theorem on, and some examples that you can't. Uh, my advice is, uh, you know, to if you can't apply that theorem, you want to because it makes your life easier, uh, much less work. Um, if you can't, then you must go back to the original definition and show that the three properties either show, either show that they all hold or show that one of them doesn't hold. And when you're doing that, to show that, show that one of the properties holds, you must make a generic argument. Um, you know, to show that it sets closed under addition or closed under scalar multiplication, you must make a generic argument. Uh, it's not sufficient to show that uh, you can find two vectors that you can add together and get, get one that's in the set. You have to show that that holds for any two vectors that you pick, and that means you must make a general argument to show that uh, a set's not closed um, under either addition or scalar multiplication. Uh, you need to find a counterexample. And a counterexample means come up with a specific example with real numbers, and by real numbers I mean actual numbers, um, just like this one that's on your screen now. Um, you know, a specific vector, 1, 1, 1, a specific scalar, 2. Multiply those together and see what you get and show that that's not in the set. So that's a counterexample. So to show that it is closed, make a general argument. To show that it's not closed, find a specific example.